Oh, hello, I didn't see you there. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. I know you're there. Um, I'm here to go over the LT sheet with you on the rights of the streets of Memphis. And this was not in your study sync booklet. This is actually on, let's see, if you go to the Canvas calendar, it should be there. There's like a link to the story. It's a crazy story. And did you do your journal based on this? Oh, yeah. I need to know of a time where you had to take care of business. Like you had a bully that you had to stand up to. But remember, you didn't tell me about a bully you're standing up to now because then I have to report it to the administrators because by law, apparently, I have to report all bullying incidents. So hopefully you told me this happened to you a long time ago. Okay. Oh, does anyone in class have, like, a really mean mom, like, this mom, like, oh, like, she loves you, but she is tough, like, you're scared of her a little bit, yeah, that's me, too, and my husband's mom is scary, too, so, yeah, I, I don't know, this story is just very relatable, and the author, he's African-American, he was a big deal during the Harlem Renaissance. Um, his family lived in a tenement. This is an autobiographical story. So that means it's nonfiction. So why do I tell you that? Well, because um, for number 10, it's going to be important. So going through this, I need you to watch this entire video and then click submit. So I know that you watch it and I give, give you points. I also need you to fill out a new sheet. I left you like a color sheet with Mrs. Klein. Make sure you do that after you read the story, though. Okay, for the exposition, this is set in Memphis, Tennessee. I was there like two summers ago. We went to go see Elvis's house. And it was really tacky. Elvis's house was, but it was fun. I loved it. It's Music City, you know. So this was set in 1920s, 1930s, right? This is before the Civil Rights Movement. Um, and Richard lived with his mom. It seems like his father is out of the picture. And anybody that had, like, just lives with their mom in class, that was me until my stepdad came along when I was five. But I, I should have asked you to write about that. I just didn't know if that would make anyone upset or if you thought that that was me, you know, getting too personal. Because you haven't really met me yet, so you might feel weird about writing about that. So, But I really wanted to hear about that. Um, and this is a time, it sounds like they live in a really kind of a tough city. It's a time of racial discrimination. And we know that the, the family, Richard and his mom, they, they're hungry because the dad left. Um, and the rising action, what's the main problem? What's the main conflict? Um, the boy must become a man. You know, he's got to fight to survive. He's got to grow up faster than he's comfortable with, that anybody's comfortable with. Well, as a climax, well, when he was cracking the skulls, I would say that that was pretty dramatic, right? Um, he, like, took his bat. And, I don't suggest doing this, guys. Uh, for number four, falling action. What's the moment where you didn't know if the protagonist or the antagonist was going to win? Um, I was a little scared when the parents rushed into the street, right? Like, were the gangs going to come back? But Richard, he shouted at them, too. And for the first time, he said, grown-ups ran from him. So in the resolution, I said, like, he won the rights to the streets of Memphis. He was basically, like, the man, you know. And what were some character foils? Well, I said, Richard and his mom were character foils. They were both kind of tough and stubborn, but they had, like, a little difference between them. The gang and, the, and Richard... Um, the mom and the dad, right? The son and the dad. Those are all character foils. Character foils are similar characters with one difference or two opposite characters. That's on the final, okay? Number seven, okay, types of conflicts. Man versus self. There's always a man versus self conflict, right? Because the protagonist has to change psychologically. Uh, man versus nature. Oh, why did I say that? Oh, he's hungry. Yeah. So, yeah, if, I think hunger is a man versus nature conflict. Man versus man, that's him versus the gangs. Man versus society. For a while, he was kind of like a little baddie. Like, oh, the police were probably looking for Richard with his bat and everything. Yikes. Um, and then man versus fate. I mean, we all know that we have to grow up at some point and be... An adult who's not fun. Um, that's your destiny. Sorry to tell you. Um, so we knew that Richard was going to have to 
have to deal with some really tough consequences. Um, number eight, what's the main conflict? We said the author must become a man. The dad is absent. There's no food in the house. The mom really needs Richard to step up. Um, the uh, narrative point of view. I said this was first person because it was kind of hard to figure out who is a narrator. I, I kept calling on the boy, but his name is Richard. And this is autobiographical. It's a nonfiction, right? So that's going to be a question on the final. Like it's going to give you a passage and it's going to be like, what? person is this and you're going to say oh I first you're going to know because you're smart like that that's what Mrs. Klein said okay um the next one 10 author's purpose there's four purposes for writing guys there's to inform to persuade to inspire and to entertain um was this entertaining to me yeah the story shocked me it was an important story right um we've all had episodes like that where we had to like stand up to someone who is absolutely atrocious so i would say more though it's teaching me a lesson so sometimes you don't know what you can do until you have to do it like until you're like almost beaten down to like the animal side of yourself where you have to survive. Ah, um, yeah. So <laughs> thought this story went really well after most dangerous game. Cause in the end of most dangerous game, I kept thinking like, is Ringsford the new general Zarov? Like, is he going to be hunting humans now? Did he get a taste of how fun and dangerous that was? We don't really get left with an ending. So I thought this would be cool. I like these survival stories. Um, okay. What is the author's voice and tone? Well, I said there's this really interesting juxtaposition between the young Richard's voice and the old Richard's voice, right? When he talks about his father, he says he thought of his father with a deep biological bitterness. Whoa. That, that's a lot to unpack, right? He didn't just say, I thought of my father with anger. He said, I thought of my father with a deep biological bitterness, meaning like, he just even abhorred his own DNA, like because he, down to the cellular level, hated his father. He was so bitter. He was so angry. And that was like from the point that he was a cell. Wow. So when he was little, he didn't have those emotions, right? He was just like, Mama, I'm hungry. I notice my mom is sad, right? But this old Richard, his voice in there... It adds so much sophistication to the story, right? It shows like how he's reflected on how this helped him become a man. And kind of some of the sadness he, he encountered as a young boy. Um, so round dynamic, that means that Richard, the main character, was a complex character, round. And dynamic, that means he went underwent a psychological change. He definitely did, right? Wow. Um Mom, I thought she was rounded dynamic. And the end of the story, she just, you know, let Richard be a little boy and did what she could. But towards the end of the story, right, she had to sort of make Richard go out and do some things. She said, I'm going to have to, like, pre-bully him so that he can make it in this world. And that's so sad. I used to do that to my sister's. Anyone else pre-bully their younger siblings so they're going to be ready for the real world? <laughs> That's so sad. The gang, flat and sadic, they are just evil, right? They're not complex. They don't undergo, well, I don't really think they undergo like psychological change because they weren't complex to begin with. They're just thieves. So I'm going to go with that answer. And I think the dad also flat and sadic. We really don't understand why he left. For 13, what's a theme? I'd say uh, people should stand up for themselves, you know, because, I might add a because, um, you know, if they don't, no one's going to, you know. Another theme is that people, like, people have to lose their innocence and become adults. And that's going to happen in the most terrible times like the most like okay let me just tell you something when you hit a time in your life that is really hard that is really traumatic well guess what you're gonna undergo a psychological change and you become a new version of yourself and you're gonna vibrate higher and you're gonna be a newer being and you're gonna be a better being hopefully than you were the previous day but this does not happen until you go through trauma 
So think about how a diamond is made. Diamonds are made under intense pressure in the earth. Same thing with human beings. You can become a diamond through hard work, through struggle, through turmoil. So maybe that's my theme. Um, intense pressure can create a new person. Okay. Situational irony. When's, when did something happen that was other than expected? Hmm. I did not expect his mom to lock him out. And she said, don't you come back in here, right? And she slapped him. <gasps> right? Um, and then I didn't expect him to beat up an entire gang in the end of the story. Um, verbal irony. The mom tries to be funny. This, this is not really a pun, but I didn't know what else to say. She said, he said he's hungry. She said, go and catch a hungry. She was exaggerating, so I don't know. That's the best I could do on verbal irony, guys. Um, dramatic irony. Okay, Richard did not know that his father was gone. Um, like, for good, right? When he was little. But we knew, right? Um, another thing is the gang didn't know about the stick that Richard was holding when the second time when he was ready for them. Okay, so that's dramatic irony illusions um okay at one point he said i'll kill you um i really do think he was in that much of a frenzy that he would have killed the kids um but there was some really intense language there like he cracked their skulls i really don't think their skulls cracked like no one died in this incident but i'm sure it made a terrible noise so I'd say there's a little bit of exaggeration. That's hyperbole. But it just showed like how crazy he was. He was like a crazed animal. Personification. In the beginning of the story, he was, I said, hunger stood over me and loomed um, as a huge figure beside my bed. Oh my gosh. That seems frightening and real, you know, like, I mean, hunger is just in your stomach, but when you think of it as a figure standing over your bed, I mean, think of how ominous that is, right? So it just kind of shows how bad the situation was. Finally, um, okay, dialect. I love this story for dialect. So the mama says, don't you come back in this house. And when you listen to it, you really could tell that mom was angry, right? What's the effect of that? She's instead of saying, don't come back in here, comma, Richard, right? Um, instead, I feel like we got a true vision of how angry his mom was, right? She used slang and she was not playing around. I think it was authentic. When your mom speaks to you, she probably, if she's upset, she's going to yell and she's not going to have perfect English, right? She's not going to be calm. Number 20, uh, a very dramatic moment where she kind of lost it was she said, I'll whip you. That's really scary. Um, what's the effect of that? Mom is having to be a little bit crazy because she has to be. No parent wants to ground you. Oh, no parent wants to, you know, my little baby. Sometimes she has to cry herself to sleep every once in a while. It's terrible. I sit there and the first couple weeks, like, I couldn't even handle it. I felt like a terrible person. Um, but sometimes you have to do things to teach your little kids how to handle things. Like, I don't know if you have like a little sibling that has fallen, like when they learn to walk, you know, you don't want to be like, oh, poor baby, right? You want to pick them up and be like, dust it off, put some dirt on it, keep going, you know? Um, we just, you know, as parents, I think that this shows like the heat of the moment, but it also shows like, she probably didn't want to be like that, but she had to. This is a tough situation. Richard was growing up a little soft. She had to toughen him up. Okay, word choice. I would just write down deep biological bitterness. Man, that is so effective. Why is that effective? Um, I think, number one, it shows the reflection of how he thought about his father when he grew up. Like he, like I said, hated his father, even down to his DNA. He was angry with him. It's not just, oh, I don't like my dad. He's such a loser. He's such a deadbeat. He said with a deep biological bitterness. And I also think this is cool. This shows a reversal of fortune because no longer see the little Richard that can't stand up for himself. 
little Richard. Who? Oh, I'm sorry. He's not the Richard that can't stand up for himself anymore. He is a published author, very famous. So um, a giant figurehead in the Harlem Renaissance, if you will. Okay, there's going to be a couple quiz questions on the end of this. I hope you paid attention. I think there's a little like button you can press to redo the questions maybe too. Not totally sure about that, but hope you were listening and took notes. Okay, I can't wait to meet you. Bye.